Well, God bless you and welcome to the Voice of Deliverance. I'm your host, Bishop Robert Page, and today is the day that the Lord has made. We shall what? Rejoice and be glad in it. You know, I'm so happy and blessed that you have joined us today. And I want to remind you that this is your day for a miracle. And we're, today we're going to be ministering on the Word of God and we believe in the Word of God today. The Word of God is the infallible, written, and uh, uh, inspired Word of God, and it is the Bible. That's right. And today, we're going to look at Revelations, the third chapter. And some of you may know this passage of Scripture, but it's very important today, and it's very relevant for the Church of Jesus Christ today. And we're going to talk about a particular church that the Apostle John was writing to. And there are, of course, a number of churches that he wrote to, but one in particular was the book, or we'll say the Church of Laodicea. And those of you that have your Bibles today, or you may have your Bible right there in your heart, that's all right. We're going to look at Revelations chapter 3. And beginning at verse 14. And the word of God says, And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, write these things, saith the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot, and I would that thou wert cold or hot, so then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increaseth with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. To, so today, I want to talk to you about this particular church because in modern times we are in the modern church the church of Jesus Christ and we have this lukewarm spirit rampant running rampant in the church today and you may say well my church is not like that well this church is not like that but there is a sickness in the body and it's called lukewarm sickness. We'll, say, we'll call it that today. But when we, go, when we get sick in our, in our body, we have to go to the doctor. And sometimes the doctor lets us know that there's a sickness in your body or, or a disease that has to be treated or or you need medication for this sickness. But there is a sickness in the body of Jesus Christ. And this sickness is called lukewarmness. And what do we mean by that? It means, like the Lord was saying here, that this particular church was neither hot nor cold. And... and Sometimes, for analogy, I like to have, I like to have coffee in the morning. I like in the morning. I like to have hot coffee, and sometimes in the evening time, I might drink it cold. But one thing I don't like is for my coffee to be in the middle, where it's neither hot nor cold. I just don't like it. It it just doesn't taste good and. Quite quite often, if I if I was to drink a coffee that was in the middle, where they say lukewarm, I might spit it out, and so I can identify with what the Lord was saying here when He said, "I will spit thee out of my mouth," because it doesn't. He's you don't taste good to Him, you know, and so. For us as believers of Jesus Christ, He wants us to be 
uh, either hot for him or cold for him. And truthfully, I believe that he'd really, really rather us to be hot. <laughs> you know, because if you're cold, you're not even you're not even in the fellowship anymore. But it, it, it but for 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 us, he, he's saying that it's dangerous for us to be in the middle. It's it's better for us to be for him or against us or against him. But for those of us in the church of Jesus Christ, something has to change. Something has to change. We're in the middle of a very dangerous time in the church where uh, where he said that you have to make a decision. Either you're going to be hot or cold. And so why is this so important right now that we make this crucial decision as a church? It's because the, the time that we're living in is is a time where we are growing closer and closer and closer to the Lord's return. And I don't want him to come back or or call me home and say your your work wasn't finished or you didn't do your work to my expectations or you didn't live in a way that glorified me or a way that didn't that 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 wasn't uh, uh, that didn't glorify the spirit of God, and so when I go to church, I want to I want to talk about the actual church for a minute. So when I go to church, I like to see the spirit of God in action. I want to see God moving, and I want to see uh, the spirit of God in the church building. Building. I don't want to see God blessing His people. I don't want to come to church for a show or a fashion or or uh, a form of godliness no i want to see god real i want to see the manifestation of the the spirit of god in his church in his building in in his sanctuary why because it is it is evidence that he's real and that he is uh, risen from the dead you know jesus on the third day, he rose from the dead. And sometimes we act like he's still dead. Sometimes we act like uh, he didn't get up from the grave. But I come today to serve notice on the devil that Jesus is alive. And he is alive in me. And he is alive in you. But, but sometimes we act like he's not. And we act like he's dead and, we, and that we're serving a dead God. But today I want to re want you to realize and understand that Jesus is alive and he's real. In church we have to start acting like he's real. We have to start acting like God is God and that he is still who he said he is. And we have to act like, you know, that he came to set he to 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 set free and to heal and to save those who are lost. And that we have to be a witness for those who are uh, lost. And we have to be a, 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 a real example of the believer. And so and when, we're, when we're not a, 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 a good example of the believer, that's when we are lukewarm. When there is not a clear uh, separation between the world and the church, we're lukewarm. When you can look at uh, a churchgoer and you don't see any difference between the churchgoer and uh, uh, the man in the world, then we're lukewarm. And something has to change. Something is definitely wrong when we go to church and we see the saint in the center and they look both look alike. They both look alike. You know, something has to change. You know, it's not always something that happens overnight. But if you've been in the church for any length of time, and there's no change, then there's something wrong with that. There's something wrong when you consistently go to church day in day out, Sunday after Sunday, 
And there's no change in your heart. There's no change in the way you dress. There's no change in the way the way that you uh, are are your talk or how you treat one another. There's no love coming from you. There's something wrong with you as a believer. And yes, it's stepping on it's stepping on your foot. It's stepping on my feet too right now. The message is real, and God is. We have to we have to we have to do something different. And so what I'm saying is today that we have to uh, uh, allow God to shake us up. God wants to shake us up. He wants to shake the church. He wants to shake us like a tree. And anything that is dead on this tree has to be shaken off. A dead weight cannot stay. In the body of Christ. If we are dead weight, you got to be shaking them. And something has to change in our life. So, uh, it's important that when we go to church, those of you that go to church, and I believe you do go to church, praise the Lord. <laughs> and, uh, and, and not only that, but we are not only church goers, but we are also the church we are the church we are the called out the separated ones we are separated from the world we are those who have been called out we are called the the uh we are the church that is set apart and so what i want to say to you today is we have to be different there's no way that we should leave church and Go down the street and act like the devil. And you smoking and drinking and carrying on. And that tells me that there's no change in your life. There's no change in your heart. Nothing has, has changed since you received God. You know, now the Bible tells us that we are, when we are born again, we take on a new creation. And... The Bible says that all things have passed away and something new comes into being. We are what? A new creature, a new creation. Praise the Lord. But sometimes people act like there's nothing been changed in your life. If you are, if you say that you're born again and you go to work and you go to the lunchroom and you're laughing and cussing and hanging out with the boys and they look at you like, didn't you just, wasn't you just in church the other day? <laughs> you're, you're making a mockery out of the church. So there have to be something different. I remember going to the job one time and, and I was always talking about the Lord talk about the church and the things of, of God and so much that my co-workers started calling me God man and I said okay that mean I'm part God and part man they do so in other words they saw something different in me than what they saw in their selves and their fellow co-workers and praise God glory to God that's what the 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 unbeliever needs to see you know if we're praying for the unbeliever to get saved and we can't believe god for them to get saved and and they're not we're not showing them the proper example of a believer we have to show them the real you know i want to say to you that there is a, a divine, a definite difference between the real and unreal. You ever see when you go to a bank or go to a store and you, you give the cashier a $100 bill, what do they do? They take a, a, a marker and they mark on that thing. And if it turns a certain color, they know that that, uh, $100 bill is either real or it's fake. 
And if it's fake, it's called what? A counterfeit. Well, there's many counterfeit Christians in the church today. You profess one thing, but you're doing something else. You're living a diff you're living a lie. So we need we need today a shaken up. You know, there used to be a song where the man would say a whole lot of shaking going on. Well, there's about to be a whole lot of shaking going on in the church. Because God does not want us to be phony. He doesn't want us to be a, a phony example of the believer. Either, either we're going to believe God and be a righteous example of, uh, uh, of the Lord and who we are supposed to represent, which is Jesus Christ, or we're not. And so, I want to say to you today that there is a change of the guard that has to take place. And the, it starts with the head. I used to have a, pra uh, a pastor years ago, and he would always say, when a fish stinks, if it stinks the head first. <laughs> he was an old fisherman. And so when, it's, when, it, when, when the head stinks, meaning the leadership, the, 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 his following or, or whoever is with him, the, his congregation is sure to follow. So we can't expect to have change in the church if the leadership does not start first. Leadership has to change. We have to, in other words, we cannot be leaders. I mean, bishops and pastors and overseers and and those of us who are in positions of authority and we're not living right. We have to be an example to those who we are leading. Who those of you, those that look up to us, we can't say that we want to walk in holiness, but yet, if you go on our Facebook page, we got uh, pictures that doesn't glorify God. Let's just say it that way. We have, uh, uh, or maybe we're we're listening to music when we're alone that that is uh, ungodly. So, I want to tell you, when I go alone, I, I'm going to listen to my gospel music. When, I, when I'm in the car, one thing I don't listen to anymore is worldly music. I just don't like it. It doesn't do anything for me anymore. I'm going to listen to something that glorifies God. Most of the time when I'm watching TV, you know, I'm watching something that, that glorifies God and, and, and builds up my spirit. Now, if something comes on and you, you don't realize it right away, you want to catch it, that's, that's, that's one thing. But when you want to sit right in front of the TV or listen, sit right in front of the, of, the, of the radio and there's, you know, foul language going on and you don't check it, th that's just like you're condoning. Now, I want to tell you something. In my house, when the kids want to play... You know, certain kind of music. Mm -mm. I'm gonna shut that thing down. I'm not gonna have that in my house. It was why it's gonna grieve my spirit. I don't like it. It has something to do with with my. Uh, I, I just don't feel right. And not only that, but it grieves the spirit of God in our home. And we want God to be glorified in everything that we do, so that we can. Glorify God and now I want to say this When I get to home My my heavenly home It is very important to me that I want to hear these words Well done my good and faithful servant in whom I am well pleased you know <laughs> What's the use of living? Uh, 50 60 70 80 years on this earth and then you get to home, you get to you get to heaven, and 
you hear uh, the judgment seat, you get to the judgment seat and you hear, you know, you didn't glorify me, you didn't do this, and you didn't do, do that. Or, why didn't you serve me better? Why didn't you do this better? You know, and I want to hear God say, my son, you know, you have run the race. Enter into my rest. And and that's what God wants for us. He wants us to receive our crown of glory. You know, God wants to bless you even on this earth. God wants to bless you. He wants to bless us and make us a blessing. But we can't be blessed when we're not living right. So, when we look at this church of Laodicea, I see that in verse 18, he says, He says, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed in the the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anointest thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. Now what's the Lord saying here? That is saying that there is healing and restoration for us. In other words, he says, my will is for you to be saved. It's, it's my will to be that you be trying to find that you may be rich. Not He's not talking about money. That's only one aspect. But he also said that you might have your garments of, of white and raiment, that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness be washed away. The shame of your nakedness. In other words, he wants us to be uh, clothed with garments that are spotless. When you sin, when you don't live right, your spirit and your soul uh, uh, have uh, spots. In other words, you're not you're not right before the Lord. He wants us to be right. He wants us to be. He wants us to get to give us medicine. And so, friend, I want to tell you today, there's medicine for us. There's medication for the church. There's medicine for us that in and today, it's called the blood of Jesus. So, God is real. The Lord is real, and He wants to bless us and set us free in Jesus' name. So, it's very important that we live a life that glorifies God. You can't say, well, you know, Bobby over there, look at how he's living. You know, I used to... I used to know a buddy of mine, and he would say, "Well, you know, when you when you point your friend, finger at somebody, there's there's another three fingers right there that's pointing back at you." In other words, and Jesus also used these words. He said, uh, "Don't," he said, "Don't you can't take the the beam out of someone else's eye until you first take the needle out of your own." I'm paraphrasing. But he said, you have to deal with yourself first. You can't stand in the seat of judgment of somebody else and you haven't judged yourself. You have to take care of what is in front of you. You have to take care of yourself and, and, and realize that, hey, maybe you're, not, maybe you're not living hot for the Lord. Maybe you're a little bit lukewarm. You know, when you go to take a bath at night or your shower, you always check the water, make sure that it's neither hot nor cold. If it's too cold, cold if it's too hot, you're going to what? You're going to burn your skin. And if you get in when it's too cold, you're going to freeze. You want the water to be just right. But when it comes to the Lord, He wants us to be hot. Or cold. He wants us to make a decision. The Bible says, Choose you this day who you will serve. And friend, today, 
And it's important that we make that decision. Whom are we going to serve? Are we going to be on the Lord's side? Are we going to be on the devil's side? Time is winding up. And you say, well, I got time. I want to live my life like this for a while. I want to, I want to party a little bit longer. Friend, we ain't got time. We don't have time. Uh, we have a little bit of time on this earth, and and it's it'll be time to go on home. We can go home at any time. We can pass from this life at any time. We don't have time to waste. So I, I counsel you today, as Jesus counseled the church of Laodicea, he said, buy of me. He said, buy of him of healing and restoration. So today I want to counsel you, my brother and my sister. I want to counsel you. You can be healed. You can be restored. You can be uh, uh, in right standing with the Lord. I want to I want to pray with you and I want to believe God for you. And I believe God is touching you right now. Friend, I want you to pray this prayer with me and believe God that he will restore you right now. Heavenly Father, I I thank God for it. I thank you for every one under the sound of my voice that they have heard what you have said today lord these are not my words they are your words you are calling for them to be a uh, return to a uh, 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 to leave a, a lukewarm state and to come to a hot and cold state either you're going to be hot or you cold but lord touch set free and heal right now in the name of jesus i thank you right now for that one that's called that's listening right now oh lord that that they have heard the call today to come up higher and to be healed and set free and delivered today in Jesus name my friend call upon the name of the Lord today and you will be healed you will be set free and you shall shall be saved in Jesus name call upon the name of Jesus he's real he wants to heal you set you free and deliver you my friend this is Bishop Page, and I thank you for tuning in to The Voice of Deliverance. We're here every week. You can catch us, catch us right here on this channel and tell a friend that you have been blessed by The Voice of Deliverance. I'll see you next time. Until then, God bless you.